Too Good to Be True, The Colossal Book of Urban Legends, by Jan Harold Brunvard. Chapter 5, Sex Capades, Story 7. Sex in Disguise. Household Headquarters, Office of the Divorce Counselor, The American Home. Subject, A Halloween Party, To Whom It May Concern. A couple was invited to a real swanky mass Halloween party, so the wife got costumes for both. On the night of the party, she got such a terrible headache that she told her husband to go without her. He protested, but she said all she was going to do was take a couple of aspirins and go to bed. There was no need for his good time to be spoiled by not going. So he got into his costume and off he went. The wife, after sleeping soundly for an hour, woke without a sign of pain. And as it was a little after nine, she decided to go to the party. Inasmuch as her husband didn't know what kind of costume she was wearing, she thought it would be a good thing to slip into the party and observe how he acted when she wasn't around. So he, so she joined the party at the first one, and the first one she spied was her husband, cavorting around on the dance floor, dancing with a slick chick, and then another, copying a little feel here and there. So the wife slipped up to him, and being a rather seductive babe herself, he left his partner standing high and dry and devoted his attention to the new stuff and had ju that had just arrived. She let him go as far as he wished, naturally, and finally, when he whispered a little proposition, she agreed, and they went out to one of the cars, etc., 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 Just before unmasking at midnight, she slipped away, went home, and got back into bed, wondering what kind of explanation her husband would make for his behaviour. He came home and went right into the bedroom to see how she was. She was sitting up, reading, and asked what kind of time he had. He said, oh, the same old thing. You know, I never have a good time when you are when you aren't there. Then she said, Did you dance much? He said, Well, I'll tell you, I never danced a dance. When I got there, Bill Rivers, Les Brown, and some other guys were stagged too. So we just went back in the den and played poker. But I'll tell you one thing, that fellow I loaned my costume to sure had a hell of a time. Whoops. <laughs> this piece of Xerox law, or Xerox law, has been around for many years, with or without the spurious memo heading down heading shown above the term slick chick seductive babe and stag echo dated slang yet these words remain in most modern texts as does the humorous dangling modifier in the second paragraph some texts yeah, some texts are more graphic in rendering the sex scene and various indifferent personal names occur including Charlie as the name of the man who borrowed the costume. I've always thought that this Halloween legend might be the basis for a successful ad campaign for aspirin 
When Reader's Digest ran a, sa a sanitized version in November 1988, the setting was a masked ball, but the borrower of the costume was still Charlie. The story also is also transmitted orally, as is another sexcapade story, in which two husbands contrive to switch wives overnight on a camping trip, unaware that their wives had the same plan and had already switched positions in their tents. Hell, that's heavy. Well, that's it for that story and then for this episode. Next, uh, the next is actually uh, um, AIDS origin stories. It looks like it might just be a collection of short stories about the origins of the STD AIDS. But nonetheless, got to do it next time. Until then... Thanks for watching.